I, I would like to see in INDC is to see uh, uh, obligations, not voluntary obligations for developed countries to, to reduce their emissions uh, to certain limits. And we ha should have a very strong MRV system to monitor, to review and vari verify this uh, emission reduction. Without it, we cannot, we cannot really rely on this system. The factor of shame and reputation if countries aren't meeting their voluntary targets can be quite powerful. I think there will be pressure among the, na the, the nations of the world for them to stay within their targets, especially as we continue to see the severe effects of climate being visited on the peoples and countries of the world. So it's an important start. It's not enough, but with regular reporting and transparency, and regular provisions for tightening up as necessary, we can continue to make progress. And sometimes you get surprises. We did in California when we passed the clean car law. This was before we, we had hybrids or plug-in hybrids. So the automotive engineers really stepped up to the plate and we were achieving reductions in the manner we had hoped to achieve and exceeded them. What's so important is that it, the signal is that all countries are starting to take this issue really seriously and they're setting out what they want to do. Now some are more ambitious than others. Some send a more direct signal to business around what specific targets are, whether it's around renewable energy or renewable transport fuels or standards for power generation. We need to uh set up some incentives for that, but also to, uh, to plan for uh, sanctions uh, in, uh, in the, the eventuality it's not uh, achieved. And uh, the, in fact, the, the French energy low transition is probably uh, the one major and first step towards that, because the first thing is, yes, you need to, uh, to disclose about your carbon footprint and so on. Second step will be, you need to reduce, and if you don't, some sanctions will happen. Whatever comes out of this agreement, I think what is very interesting is around that you have a whole process which you know has started uh, bringing together local governments, NGOs, private sector, and there's a lot of private sector initiatives that have you know emerged over the last months related to that, which I think is extremely promising. The U.S. has significantly reduced its greenhouse gas emissions over the past eight or nine years. In part, that was because of the recession, but also because we have shifted from coal to natural gas. We used to be about 50% reliant on coal for electricity. Now we're more like 36 or 37%. Also, our, our cars are becoming more efficient as a result of initiatives by California and then in conjunction with the federal government. And even in California where we're famous for our sprawl, um, we have combined land use planning in transit oriented corridors to reduce the amount of miles people have to drive in the first place. So it's a multi-pronged approach. The question of shale gas is, has definitely been hard to handle for the renewable energy industry over the last years. But there are a number of signals that you know shale ga gas companies are not making money, and that you know shale gas prices will actually go up. So let's see. I dispute the fact that any country feels like global warming or climate change will be on unbalanced. 
a help for them. It may help certain parts of Russia, but it will also visit great harms on other parts of the country. And interestingly, Russia submitted an INDC and has not been a unhelpful force in these negotiations. They've played a, construct, a constructive role. More and more uh, countries are getting uh, more recognition uh, on the need to diversify their economy away from heavy dependence on, on, on uh, fossil fuel. And uh, you can see, like, uh, Gulf countries, you see Saudi Arabia, you see even Qatar, many countries are now adopting uh, renewable energy strategies, which are very ambitious, and they're working hard to diversify their economy away from dependence on, 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 on uh, oil. And uh, we have to uh, really have uh, what we call the local champions, yeah, not only leadership for, for everybody to move on with a new kind of... Uh, mitigation and adaptation methods as well as uh, you know actions plan but also the local champions the champion that on the ground make things happen and also very close with the uh, grassroots level that can support all the projects california and other subnational jurisdictions can reach out and partner with their counter with our counterparts in other countries even if the national governments are not responsive or are not taking proactive action we can't enter into binding agreements. We're not a, a federal government, a national state, but what we can do can have a lot of persuasive power. And we are trying to partner with our counterparts in other jurisdictions to create greater ambition and put pressure on the national governments.